Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and you are looking at a piece of uh, Fresnel lens. This is a broken piece that we've had for a while. This is about a 150 line Fresnel lens, and I have our new super powered lens. This is about 30 pounds of glass, this lens, and we're using this for some super macro video that we're going to be doing of Fresnel lenses. So I've cleaned the Fresnel lens up as best that I could. It still has some scratches. This is just a broken piece that we've had for a while again. What I'm going to do is zoom in on this. Now, microscopic photography is pretty much, uh, usually you can't zoom. So you can see that those lines are 150 lines per inch. So we are already well less than a one inch area right now. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And this is a spot for no lens, by the way. That's what the rings look like. And I'm going to get my arms off the table because any little movement, like me just tapping it, makes everything shake because we're at such a tight uh, field right now. So I'm going to go all the way in and try to get a little bit better focus if I can. Hold on one second. By the way, the depth of field on this uh, is extremely sensitive. So there is there is the rings close up of a Fresnel lens. Now any of the debris or scratches, that's just literally dust stuck inside of those rings. Those rings, uh, each black line is about a third of the width of a human hair. So you are looking at a Fresnel lens extremely close up. In future videos I'm going to be showing you a spot Fresnel lens, uh, I mean the difference between a spot Fresnel lens and a linear Fresnel lens and I think you'll be quite surprised. In order to give you something to reference of how tight uh, of a shot that we're actually getting with this, I'm going to take and zoom in on something that you're all familiar with. That black line, which is <clears throat> needs to be, is a human hair. That's actually uh, one of my hairs from my head. That black line is just a regular hair. So kind of gross, but it'll give you an idea of what, uh, how tight we're, the magnification that we're working with. So we're able to zoom in that far with this lens set up. It's pretty amazing, actually, considering that it just sits right in front of any camera, any digital camera, any camera with a, a decent lens will be able to do this with this particular lens set up. Now, the reason that it's really clear is because the optics, this lens, the OEM on it, when they made it, was probably around $3,000 just because there's almost 30 pounds of glass in it. The more glass you have, the more quality. You just can't get this with a typical macro lens. So in future videos, we're going to be doing uh, different types of Fresnel lenses just to see what their ring pattern looks like and how light affects them uh, directly. <coughs> By the way, here's one more shot of the LED light. Now, this is uh, a ruler that I'm dropping down there to show you that that chip, the entire LED chip, is about a quarter of an inch across, maybe five sixteenths of an inch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that. Those are, that's about as close as I can get it on the LEDs. So that is, well, it's probably the first time you'll ever see an, uh, one of the LEDs from one of those take up an entire high definition screen. This is an old cool Barracuda hard drive. Uh, this is with a standard macro lens. This is actually a high quality one. This is the macro setting for this camera, and you can see that that's pretty cool. Uh, that's about as close as you can get, which is really good, actually. But we're going to see how close we can get with our super lens. So this is with the super high-powered lens. And 
Now, what's neat about this is we can do this. That is the corner of, you're going to notice half of it's out of focus. That's because the depth of field on this is virtually zero. So if I back it up just a touch, I can focus here. It's actually less than the surface of that chip. So I back it up and focus on that. So we're going to focus in on that eight and see what type of printing they use. And you can see by the little holes on the number that that's probably some type of screen printing or that's just the way that it, the surface of that chip makes it. By the way, that chip that we're looking at, the corner of it, is probably less than a quarter of an inch squared. So this is one of the screw mounts for the hard drive. That's the threading for it, and we're in so tight right now that just me touching the camera makes it shake. So I'm going to back out a little bit so it's less sensitive, and I'm going to wander around the surface of this hard drive. There's the other screw bolt on the other side. I'm going to find something interesting like those and try to zoom in on them. It's a little tricky to do this with this tight field of view, but there we go. I'm just going to let it stop wobbling. neat as you can focus on the background or the foreground. And to finish we're gonna I'm gonna zoom in on the tip of a ballpoint pen. I can actually move the lighting. You can't do that with a microscope. You're pretty much fixed with the lighting that you have. Here's one more shot of the ballpoint pen. I'm going to zoom in real tight and we're going to go out on a limb and make an assumption that this is the first video ever. Let me get this just right before I do it. Okay. This is the first video ever where someone has captured their own reflection in off the ink of a ballpoint pen. So what I'm going to do is i got a red sweatshirt on. There's my hand. Ooh, you can see that's my fingers. I'm going to see if I can get my face in there. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.
I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.